play-by-play. With chapter eight, the potions master, it starts with actually a ton of exposition. We learn that Harry is a walking sideshow at the Hogwarts carnival. People are constantly pointing at him and his scar. You, you have to imagine that he sort of feels like a snake at the zoo that except nobody's tapping on the glass or trying to talk to him. They're talking about him. He's just constantly on display for other people's enjoyment. And I have to add, like, how jarring is this to you? Oh my God. If this is it's, you. I'm not, I have no problem like being on stage as an mm-hmm. actor, but being me, the center of attention is like really not my favorite thing. Mm-hmm. And especially what I find horrifying about this, if I'm Harry, is like, this is the kind of attention where people are trying to act like they're not looking at you and not talking about you, but they totally are. It's just, oh my God, it's so uncomfortable. It's it's like Gossip Girl meets Medieval Castle meets magical things happening. And by the way, this kid has a giant scar on his forehead to basically act as a bullseye. Um, yes. Speaking of the Hogwarts carnival, stairways going different places based on the day of the week, not literally moving in the air, but we won't get into that. Vanishing <laughs> steps, sentient doors, trick doors, fake doors, secret passages, probably covered by doors, ghosts, peeves, a maniac cat, which is basically all cats, and of course, Filch, who might be the least human of everything that I just mentioned. The fact that any student not only find their way to class, but actually live through the first night is kind of mind blowing. This place is a fun house and often the kind that horror movies have with a creepy clown with an axe. How do these kids ever actually survive? Like, this place is a death trap. It this is. Place, oh my God. And what do they have? They have a prefect and they have teachers. Yep. And like otherwise a girl yeah yeah otherwise go go figure it out and literally don't die yeah right i mean like these kids they don't know where they're going but then no. they're also getting in trouble for being late like you can't have right. it both ways right like, either tell the kids how to get to their classes <laughs> or they don't get in trouble for being late for the first week like maybe that right i <laughs> ridiculous <laughs> it, it really is it really is but harry's surviving Uh, We learn about a few of his classes, astronomy, herbology, history of magic taught by a ghost, because why not? Who better to teach history than someone who's been there through all of it? (laughs) We get an intro to Charms, Transfiguration with Prof. McGee, before Defense Against the Dark Arts with Quirrell, and in a reread, our movie eight spidey senses for horcruxes are ringing just out of control. The room smells like garlic. He's wearing a smelly turban. And before we get to that particular bombshell, he said that he got this turban as a gift for fighting off a zombie. Is a zombie different in this world than an Inferi? Or had that just not been figured out yet, right? I feel like this is probably like a terminology thing. Like the same way that she calls the Deluminator the putter outer for like the Mm -hmm. first book. Mm Mm-hmm. Because to me, I, there can't be, what is the nuance there? If those are two distinct species in the wizarding world, like, okay, in theory, are like less decayed. I don't understand yeah, what I, the difference I, is. I don't get it either. And it's it's going to come up again later. Um, but that's, Oh my God, I never right. noticed that. <laughs> that Anyways, <laughs> this isn't a Walking Dead podcast. So let's let's talk <laughs> about the turban. When we met Coral in Diagon Alley a few chapters ago, he wasn't wearing it, but now he is. That's also the same day the vault stashing the Sorcerer Stone was broken into after Hagrid emptied it, which we get at the end of this chapter. Right. Of course, on a reread, we understand that this was a failed attempt that was Coral. Yes. And that Voldemort punished him, and to keep a closer watch on him, he attached himself to the back of Coral's head. If I can channel my inner Kev on this one, this turban is hiding the fact that this dude has a snake man that apparently smells bad sticking out the back of his head. This is a mullet gone seriously wrong, wizard in the front, serial killer soul possession in the back. 
How'd I do? Spot on. <laughs> Spot on. I absolutely love it. I love the fact that you incorporated the fact that for some reason it smells bad because I've always right. kind of wondered about that. Like, why does it smell? <laughs> why does the back of his head smell? Right. Like, is it specifically Voldemort that smells? Is it, 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 it makes, Quirrell that smells? Whatever it is. Who smells in this bomb. scenario? I don't know. Well, this, this is not the end of my questions. I have many. And I, if you have answers to literally any of these, please, please tell me. Cause I, it doesn't, I how, I don't <laughs> how is Voldemort keeping an eye on Quirrell with a rag covering his face and no ability to turn his head? He has, has to have like serious peripheral vision and some sort of Oculus psychopulous spell to just like see through the turban. No, or he's just relying on the power of like legitimacy. Like maybe he can even see through Quirrell's eyes for all we know. That's really interesting because that was my next question. At the, he has to be tapped into his mind at this point, right? He has to be. How much agency does Quirrell have in this moment? I feel like we never see Quirrell like behaving in a way like you know how they say that when someone's under the imperious curse in the series there's like mm-hmm. a certain way that they act right it's like kind of a vacant thing we never see mm-hmm. moments like that with Quirrell yeah so it's like I feel like he's got plenty of agency but he as well as much agency as someone who's like ordering you to do things I mean this is command hallucinations in a, with a psychotic disorder right <laughs> like someone like whispering in your ear like do these awful things yeah it's I don't know how this works. And <laughs> I it only leads me to more questions. For what sure. happens during normal human stuff? Like oh. when Quirrell eats, does he sneak a fork around the back of his head to his scaly oh. half? But Voldemort doesn't have to eat actual food, but he might need his snake juice. Right. Snake like milk. is it only <laughs> unicorn blood that Voldemort is eating now? Or like he has to crave a slice of pizza once in a while, right? One would think, especially when you've been like a specter yeah. for the past several years. <laughs> like you've got to miss even Voldemort has to have some favorite foods. Right. And the, like if Coral eats it, can Voldemort taste it? I don't know. What what happens when Coral uses the bathroom? Is Voldemort just like sitting there doing the crossword, complaining for a courtesy flush? Surely. Surely. Like <laughs> He's, and also, what about sleeping? Like, we got to yeah. go Quirrell's not a back sleeper. Yeah. I, and I don't know. The, then whose parts are who now? Is Voldemort's oh, presence just limited to the structural backside of Quirrell's head? Or is he, oh. you know, like I said, tapped into his brain? Can he control any parts of him beyond just telling him what to do? Could he, have, could he have ever just kicked Quirrell out of his own body at any point? Or could like Quirrell have ever kicked him out? I'm doubt. I think the latter, probably not. In right. my head canon, I feel like Quirrell, like once you're, you've got Voldemort in your head, your head, like yeah. you're done. Mm-hmm. But like in terms of taking over his whole body, but you know, like the more we talk about this, the more I'm like, this is pregnancy. Mm. It's like so having it's Voldemort a Quirrell on the baby. Of- a Valdi baby on the back of Coral's head. Right? I mean, they're they're mm. a little parasitic. Mm. They're like, they really dictate everything you do. It's just funny to me, like this whole idea of like this other sentient, maybe sentient, I don't know, like kind of creature. And the, the questions of like how sentient, how like, mm. how can you split those two ideas? I don't know. It's yeah. interesting. The Belated Binge Podcast. 